What's up, everybody? Welcome to Move the Sticks. DJ, Bucky, uh, together as we march a little closer to the draft, Buck. Uh, big win for your Dodgers last night. I won't I won't go into details. But uh, I, don't know if it, I don't know if it was big. That's kind of like expected. It was the they Giants. own the Giants I mean, up there. Man. Yeah, a 10-5 win. It's always good. Always yeah. good to get a dub. Max, uh, your team, your team, your team didn't, your team didn't do it. Uh, well, we're tied. Well. We're tied in the standings. We've been playing good teams, so it's a little different. It's not. <laughs> no, all teams are good. Stuff. All teams are good. <laughs> no, they're not. No, they're not. Um, all right, let's jump into some football talk here because today on the pod, uh, not going to be a super long episode. But what we are going to do is we're going to get outside of of, uh, of round one, day one. We're going to jump in mm-hmm. with both feet to day two. Um, I think that's the best value in any drafts. Maybe, maybe especially this one. Uh, where you can get cheap starters. Um, and I think this is a draft where you look at some certain positions. Um, there's really good depth in this re- in this day two, you know, which is rounds two and three, especially when you start looking at corners, you start looking at uh, running backs, tight ends, um, defensive ends, edge rusher types. Like there's good, there's good players that are going to be here on day number two. So I thought we'd just kind of go by position and just kind of give off some of our favorite names here. You game? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good with that. Um, let's, let's jump in here. Let's start as we always do. Let's start at the quarterback position. So if we are to assume we know four are going to go in one, uh, I think we both are on the same page that Hen and hookers probably going to sneak into one. So if we eliminate those five guys, um, who's going to be the next one, who do you like? Not necessarily who the next one to go is, but a guy that you really like. And I do think with quarterbacks that, you know, I don't know that it makes a ton of sense with second round quarterbacks nowadays, because if you like them enough to take them in the second round, you probably should just trade up into the back of one to get the extra year on the contract. Um, It just makes more sense financially. So second round quarterbacks are, are becoming few and far between uh, lately. Usually there's a little bit of a gap between that first wave. And then you get to the third round um, where you could see that next group. So, for me, a third-round quarterback that I really like, one that's continued to grow on me the more that I watch him um, and the more that I've seen him and what he can do, I'm actually going to go to BYU's Jaron Hall. Uh, mm. our, our, our buddy John Beck's been working with him, uh, speaks very highly of him, but just watching him on the tape, I thought there was a lot of poise to his game. Um, he's got a lot of athleticism. He's got a little bounce to him, a little twitch to him. Uh, just want to see him be a little bit more consistent accuracy wise when he's under pressure. That was kind of my, my thing that I want to see him improve on. He's not a big guy. He's a little over six foot. He's over you know, 207 pounds, uh, but he can move. He's got a strong arm. And to me, third round would probably be, uh, would be that spot, maybe towards the middle back of three. Um, I could see mm-hmm. Jaron Hall being an interesting, an interesting find at that point in the draft. Okay. So here's what's funny. We've been working together too long. So I'm looking at my notes and uh, I have efficient pass. I said he plays more like a point guard, quick rhythm, passing game, ball control, kind of plays the game within a 10 to 20 yard box. Uh, mm-hmm. Great throwing the back shoulder fade. Um, I looked at the percentages, which are outstanding completion rate and all that. You can't really judge everything on that. And so I had two things. So I, I still kind of use the Seattle system in my head, but I had a third round grade on him. But the comparison that I made to him, I wrote down Derek Carr. And I don't Ooh, know why I broke. Like it's been a while since I've. Because they both have a little bit of a. They have a little twitch to them. Like there's like Derek yeah, Carr so I, a little bounce to him. Plays a little bounce. Yeah. So I put I put Derek I put Derek Carr in my notes, which is, which is kind of funny that um, I had it in there. But I do like him. You know the fact that he had like some rushing yards and some stuff. Um, they said that at the Senior Bowl he was beat up with his ankle and stuff, so you didn't really get a chance to see him at his best um, in that environment. But there was a lot to like about his game. You know the funny thing, I think he's. He's also an older guy. I think I have down that he's 24, Mm -hmm. um, 24 years old. I mean, not that it necessarily matters for quarterbacks, but uh, it was one of the things that I had in my notes about him. Let me uh, hold. I probably have that in here. Hold on. Darren Hall. He, I didn't have, I don't have the the, uh, birth date on this one, but yeah, I think you're right. I think he is a little bit older. Correct. I mean, but that's, I mean, that's BYU. So I'm not, I'm not necessarily surprised. Yeah. But it's, it's kind of it's a draft of, of a lot of guys like that um, this year, including obviously uh, Hinton Hooker probably at the top of the list. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Jaron Hall. So, I am with that. So, my guy, uh, and it's funny that we just talked about Jaron Hall because I'm sure that BYU probably served his mission. Uh, my guy would be Tanner McKee from Stanford. Oh, there you go. And the funny thing, man, I, 
look, I'm looking at these notes like I had a solid grade on him. Coming there, classic drop back passer, pro style offense, really good arm, solid mechanics. I thought he had quick feet inside the pocket, particularly for someone who is as tall as he is, 6'6", 230 pounds. Like that is a, a really long quarterback. I felt like he was a, had a solid all around game, questionable supporting cast. And Oof. the numbers, look, the numbers aren't great. So I'm looking like last few years, like 5,200 yards. He had 28 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. But in my notes, I have game manager plus, and I wrote down extra large Jerry Goff. Oh, interesting. Um, That's an interesting one. Yeah, like so, I I put that down, and a lot of times, man, with me, I kind of put these things down because it's kind of like that flash scouting, like the blink, where hey, what's the first person that comes to mind when you look at them? Like, just write it down when it comes to comparisons. I try not to overthink it when it comes to that, but. Obviously, that's what I thought at the time. Extra large, Jared Goff. But um, we've seen him. We've seen him do some stuff. I remember watching him in high school up here at Corona Centennial. Uh, he was, man, he was so different than what they normally play with up there. Anyone who was listening who's outside of California, Corona Centennial is probably the best public school uh, in terms of public school football that you can get in Southern California. It may be one of the best public schools in terms of football programs in all of California. And they just kind of get after it. And they've done it in a very simplistic system or whatever. He's not their normal style. But to watch him go from playing in that system to playing at Stanford gives me hope that, look, he can handle a lot of information. He can obviously process because he's going to be a Stanford grad. Uh, it's just a matter of where does he fit? He has to be in the right system to play. But a West Coast mm -hmm. offense that kind of just needs a point guard, I think he's a perfect guy for that system. Yeah, I, I saw him play in high school as well. Uh, they played a uh, school right across the street from where I was living at the time. And actually, I remember texting David Shaw during during the game and said, hey, are you recruiting this centennial quarterback? He goes, yeah, I think we actually might end up getting him. I said, well, dude, he's yeah, this guy is impressive. He is big. He can move around. Um, he's got a live arm, all those things. I, I thought he would end up being a really, really big time player. The development part of it just, it didn't come together for him as, mm -hmm. as it was expected to. Um, and you mentioned the supporting cast was not good, particularly his last year there. But when I put down comps, it's funny because I think this will be the range of comps because you kind of did the lesser version of Jared Goff. And I wrote down Sudfeld, like he, he reminded me oh, of Nate Sudfeld. Of okay. Nate Sudfeld. So kind of a big, you know, bigger guy, longer guy. Um, uh, that was my comp there. So, uh, so here's you know, the he, thing, he's Nate, Nate Sudfield has carved out a, a, a solid career in the league. He's bounced around and been on a few different teams. He has to have five, six years oh, yeah. in the league. I haven't haven't looked at Nate Sudfield. He started. Ask Rhett. Ask Rhett. He'll know. Are you guys? That's his guy. <laughs> That's his guy for sure. He used to always bring him up. Um, you know, it, it. so that's not a bad comp, man. He's He's been around. He's, he's yeah, by the way, years old. He's, he's been in the league since 2016. Yeah, so I felt made it. Hey, that's pension, baby. We're we're rolling. Holy, um, holy, good for him. Holy, holy smokes, he has been around a well, long Eagles, time. Eagles, Niners, um, six years of experience. He's been in. Yeah, nice, that? nice comp. Six six two twenty seven. By the way, Nabil uh, gave us the birth date on Jaron Hall, March twenty fourth, ninety eight. So he's twenty five years old. So he is a little bit older there. Mm -hmm. um, so. So there you go on that one. Um, all right. So we've got two names there. We've got Jaron Hall. We've got Tanner McKee. Let's go to wideouts, Buck. You want to you want us lead us off here with a wideout, second, third round wideout that uh, that you'd love to see. OK, so I could go a few different ways, but I'm going to go with Marvin Mims from Oklahoma. Um, when I checked him out, like I, I love his um, one. I love the production, watching him all the way from high school. Like, DJ, I don't know if you know this, but like. He has the state record in Texas for Ooh. receiving yards in a career, over over 5,000 receiving yards in a high school career. And in a single season, I want to say he had over 2,000 receiving yards in high school. Mm -hmm. So then you take that because that production, the, the amount of touches that he had in high school certainly translates well to college because we know that he can be productive in the Oklahoma system. He's also been very, very productive, kind of crafty, kind of does his thing in terms of creating separation and getting open solid with his hands and those things. And I just, you know, at a time where you don't have what we would call like elite wide receivers, you have guys that are more role players. I can see him filling a role in the right system and having a lot of success. 
I'm glad you mentioned him because I was not going to use him, but I felt like I'm, he's one of those guys where I almost feel like I'm taking crazy pills, Buck. Cause I'm like, what, what am I missing? Like, I, I really like this guy. He's productive. Yeah. He's got burst. Um, he tracks the ball really well. He's quick in and out. Um, he can separate. I, I didn't think he was real strong, you know, like strong after mm. the catch or maybe it's strong, you know, combat catch guy, but I really liked him. I thought, you know, this guy's a, he's a third round pick a really good third round pick and mm -hmm. man, I, I can't get any traction like when i talk to my buddies around the league gms coaches like they always kind of lukewarm on them and i'm like I don't, what what am i missing is it just a play strength thing is that i mean i don't know i i yeah i don't know I think, I think yeah i think sometimes in in these things when we get to this time of year and depending on you seeing like sometimes i think for everybody even guys inside the league i think all the names run together and you yeah. have a tendency to kind of you know, DJ, we've sat in those rooms and you're looking at the board, right? And the first round has these amount of names, the second round, but then the second and third round is just like a, just like spaghetti has been thrown on the wall. Black. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to figure out who's who. They're like 10 to 12 names at wide receiver. And you're trying to sort out who's who. You got the outside receivers and the slot receivers. And sometimes guys just, I mean, they get overlooked. Uh, I mm -hmm. feel like Mims has been overlooked that he could have been in that conversation before not like when we're on path talking about like some of the top guys but he certainly should be in the conversation he's a good player you know and he's gonna be a contributing player he's gonna have a chance no, no doubt um i, I want to go give you some numbers here and then it's going to get me to my guy okay so if you're looking at the wide receivers in this draft i'm just going to rip through a bunch of names of, of good players of highly rated players in this draft okay you've got Jordan Addison is 173 pounds. Zay Flowers, 182 pounds. Mm -hmm. Jalen Hyatt, 176 pounds. Nathan Dell, 165 pounds. Josh Downs, 171 pounds. Charlie Jones, 175 pounds. Tyler Scott, 177 pounds. Buck, I don't think I've ever seen this many. Light guys. Like, I, I can't remember. Can you remember a year where we've had this many guys that just are so undersized at that position? No, I, I, I can't. I really can't remember seeing so many guys that are so small uh, in terms of like those slender frames. And yeah. it makes it makes you worry a, a, a little bit about their durability and their ability to play through uh, the contact, the rigors of the position. Uh, but then they've all been very, very productive. Like, here's the thing. You yeah. talk about those guys. I mean, you talk about Addison, you talk about Josh Downs. I mean, it, it goes on and on. All those guys have a ton of catches where they've yeah. been able to get open. Uh, very limited injury history for most of them. But you just see them and you're like, man, they're so skinny. They're so frail. How are they going to deal with not only just the big hits that happen after they make catches, but how are they going to deal with the physical guys at the line of scrimmage that put their that's, hands that's, on them? That's, a, that's you know? a conversation that's taking place right now everywhere. You know? Yeah, like, like who, how, how are you going to get off press? What does that look like? Yeah, you can't always protect them in the slot and put them in motion. At some point, they have to be able to win on their own without assistance from the scheme or the coach. That's the concern. And so then mm -hmm. you're looking – if they're small, in my mind, I'm like, you can't be small and slow when they need to be small and exceptionally quick or exceptionally fast because you have to have something to offset what you won't bring to the table as a strong guy. Um, yep. Makes sense. So that, that leads me to this point. So I just gave that laundry list of names, right, of the undersized guys. So I'm going to I'm gonna sneak it in here. I'm going to get two names of receivers that because of that, I think are going to elevate and are going to go higher than maybe we think mm. they are. And I think these are two really, really good players, but it's Cedric Tillman from Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Who's six Oh three, three, two thirteen, ran four, five, four, but he, he's big and plays fast. He, yeah. he wins on, Physical. you know, he can win yeah. down the field. He attacks the ball. He big bodies dudes. Yeah. He beat up Keely Ringo multiple times mm -hmm. in that game against Georgia. He can adjust the ball down the field. Like he's interesting. So that's one. The second one is going to be Jonathan Mingo from Old Miss. Jonathan Mingo oh, is all yeah. Old Miss receivers. They're all huge, Buck. He's 6016, 220, ran 446. It's a lot of lots of bubbles, quick hitters. He's got some unbelievable one handed catches. Um, he can high point it. He can adjust. You know, I didn't think he was super, super polished, um, but he's physical after the catch. So when I, when you're, when you have that, when you're in that pond and there's a bunch of those little minnows running around, all of a sudden it's like, we, we got a couple of large mouth bass in here. Like these guys stand out amongst this group big time. Yeah. So it's funny you brought that up. Um, and I'm going to go back to a conversation that I had a long time ago with um, a coach, Gil Haskell, who was the wide receiver coach in Seattle 
when I was there. But I'm gonna go back to the draft when you remember when Corn Robinson, we're in the league when Corn Robinson and all yeah. those guys came yeah. out. Yeah. And so Corn Robinson, yeah. So so Corn Robinson uh came out and we were in Seattle and we drafted him from NC State. And he was a big guy and ran fast in those things. But there was another guy in the class that we were considering, David Terrell, who went mm-hmm. to the Bears. He was drafted, uh, he might have been, I think it was a first round pick. Yeah. So first round pick. Yeah. So David Terrell was six two. And I remember we were up there and, you know, like DJ, when you had the combine times, you had the pro day times and you're talking about, Hey man, he's six, two, he ran four, five, five, four, six. And we're talking about four, five, five and four, six, like it was slow. And mm-hmm. I remember Gil Haskell and Mike Holmgren were saying, Hey man, for big guys, four, five is moving because mm-hmm. you're moving a lot of weight. That's fast enough. That's this and that. And this came from a time where he used to be, um, the offensive coordinator with the Carolina Panthers, and they had a bunch of big guys. Musi Muhammad, they had Patrick Jeffers. Um, they had a bunch of big wide receivers all on the perimeter doing those things. And he was like, you got to remember, when you have big guys like that that can move, their size and their ability to post up makes it so difficult for the smaller DBs. And if they can move enough to create separation, and maybe you have to teach them tricks like, hey, they speed cut everything instead of stopping and starting. But mm-hmm. – Big guys like that have a way. So when you talk about the guys that you're talking about over six foot that are kind of bigger, thicker, and sturdier than the little guys that we're mentioning, that's plenty fast enough. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's it's, it's plenty fast enough for them to create separation and be problematic when it comes to defending them on the perimeter. Yeah. I I think, you know, when you just look at this draft, to me, it's harder in this draft to find these guys. So, Mm -hmm. you know, if you want to, if you want to get it, if you have a, you want to get a couple wideouts in the draft, you're going to target the bigger guy first because you can still get the little guy and the third, four. they're going to be there through the whole draft. You're going to find a little mm-hmm. fast guy in any round three through six. You can find a little fast guy. Yes. But the bigger, the bigger guys with some ability, those guys are a little bit harder to find, in my opinion, in this, in this crop. How about the tight ends, Buck? So tight ends. So it's funny. Um, you know, and, and, and thinking about some of the sleepers, we haven't talked about this guy, but this guy could go early. Tucker Craft. Yeah, he's um, a good player. And I don't South, think we have talked about him much either. You're right. From South Dakota State. Um, great, good seam runner. Uh, combo tight end. Flex, wide, can line up in line, can play out wide. Uh, great knack for getting open. Soft hands. Uh, does a really good job of just kind of creating space and winning those 50-50 balls over the middle of the field. Um, you think about Dallas Goddard and how Dallas Goddard evolved and has continued to develop in the league i mean this guy is similar to me i mean dallas got it to me may have been more productive and a little more polished this guy's a really good football player and we've talked about the tight end position being one of the strong points of the draft yeah dj in in this draft you have no excuse if you need a tight end and not even a a front line wide tight end if you need a flex tight end if you need a combo a guy that can be your third tight end so you can go 13 personnel there are a bunch of these basketball player like dudes that are out there capable of catching passes. And so he, to me, is one of those that has kind of flown under the radar. But we're going to hear his name day two and people will be like, who's that? Who's that from South Dakota yeah. State that's going? Yeah, no, he is a, he's a real deal. He's a real player, man. He's he's He was in my top 50 at one point in time. He's just outside of it. So he's um, he's going to be in my top 55, 60 players for sure, um, mm-hmm. which puts him right in the second round. And I, he might go – he could go a little earlier than that, maybe early second round, but a really good player. The, the guy I have stacked just ahead of him, literally one spot ahead of him, who's 42 on my list, who I love on day two, is Sam Laporta from, from Iowa. Um, he ran well, it. Buck. I mean, <laughs> if, you, you, if, I, if I could show you, like, you can't see my notes, but, like, yeah. I have those guys, like, back to back. I got oh, touching each other. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I got them. Yeah. I got them touching each other. I have their grades. Um, I right gave them the same grade. Yeah, like six oh six oh. Like yep. same exact thing. Two of my favorite guys. So yeah, you you hit it. Like Laporta is a good oh, player, man. He's a good player. He had a great workout. Um, everything he does is really really smooth and athletic. Um, he's got strong hands. I thought. You know what I wrote down on my notes? This guy is quick and fast. A lot of times with tight ends, you get one or the other. He gives you both. He's got shake at the top of routes. He can separate. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't think he was ultra physical. Um, I might give Tucker Craft a little bit of the advantage there on being a little bit more of a physical player. Um, but I just thought this guy's a he's a craftsman and he understands how to get open. He catches the football. It's funny. So the combination because those guys were touching each other for me. Um, I had 
Tucker Craft is the big body playmaker, soft hands, great range and radius, seam runner, really good after the catch, ran some jet sweeps and screens. Mm-hmm. You would see that with Craft. Laporta was the combo tight end, the wire flex, but the chain mover, good route runner, just understands how to get open, sits down in seams. Uh, you see him run seams, corners, outs, all that stuff. You talked about his physicality. The question mark that I had was his blocking. Mm-hmm. That was the thing that I dinged him on. Hey, he has to be better in terms of blocking and those things. But two really good players, two guys on day three, um, day two that we'll talk about that that second, third round. Those guys are coming off the board. They're gonna be they can be really, I mean, the tight end class, I cannot under yeah. I mean good players that you can get anywhere in the draft to really fill out that room. So Tell me if you're with me. So far, we've done QB, wideouts, tight ends. I'm most excited. Like, I would be most excited about the tight ends we just mentioned. To turn in the card in the second round, like, I, that's the value. Like, that, those are the mm-hmm. guys where I'm like, okay, you're getting – you're getting – definitely getting a good price on on where you're getting the talent there at that position. DJ, without question. I mean, I'm looking at the first – like, so the first six, not in any order. Like, I'm looking at Met, Mayer, Musgrave, Kincaid, Darnell Washington, Tucker Craft, Sam Laporte. You get any one of those guys, you're excited about your team, no matter when you have to draft. You're excited about what all of those guys bring to the table, even though they're all a little different. Um, It's really interesting. And you talk about people getting on that Dalton Kincaid. Yeah. I feel like everybody now is Dalton Kincaid is like the number one guy. I had him number two coming in. I think he's always been your number one tight end. But everybody and their mom is talking about Dalton Kincaid being the guy. And so it's interesting to see how those things play. And I think the bigger thing going to Utah, I don't think he was supposed to be the guy that we were talking Keithy. about. He was supposed to be Keithy. The other tight end got hurt. Right. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like, holy it's, crud, look at this yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of funny how, how that goes. Um, all right. Let's uh let's keep it moving here. Let's get to the running back position, Buck. And I I, I don't ever we don't ever talk about guys medical stuff on here cuz it's just not, doesn't help anybody and we want all these guys to be successful mm-hmm. but there is a good one there is a good running back that I you know I think's probably going to drop a little bit because of some medical stuff we won't we, you know we won't get into names or anything like that but um gosh it we'll see more medical stuff comes out over the next over the next week um but it's always a, a reminder when you when you're watching the draft and you see a guy and you don't know why he hasn't gone um you know there's usually a reason for that so uh let's go day two running back that you are you're really fired up about who do you got man so it's funny because you talk about um guys that are like designated role players and so a chain everyone knows how fast a chain is but Mm -hmm. dj it's not fair to watch like zach charbonnet's tape (laughs) and then to follow it up with a chain because a chain looks like he is in fast on, on fast forward his speed and, and his explosiveness and all that, the, the thing that you worry about, 5'9", 185, that's problematic. But I'm looking at my yeah. notes. First note that I have on him, big time running back, right? <laughs> like, they're probably because the speed just jumped. Balance, body control, vision, rush through arm tackles. I thought he did a good job finishing the home run speed. You can see it. Soft hands, versatile running back. I say he's pro ready. My comparison in my notes, I compared him to Dalvin Cook in terms of running style. Wow. You know, in terms of being able to, to to put it down and do those things, 65 catches is significant. Well, now that you know the size, because sometimes like you can't really tell when you're watching tape, like how big they really are. 185 mm-hmm. pounds is light, but in the right role. I mean, I think about like how game will has been able to do things for the Philadelphia Eagles. Oh, yeah. You know, in the right role, you look at like, man, here comes a little back and he gives you a little pop, gives you a little passing game. H.A. can do that. I would love to – man, you know what I would love to see. I'd love to see a, a great offensive mind like an Andy Reid have a guy like this to kind of play around with and put him in the screen game and use the speed and spread him out and do that. He's big time. a and kid for me. Yeah, I like that. That's a good one. Um, well, I have Charbonnet is going to be my highest rated guy that's going to be available on day two, um, and I love him. I'm a big fan of his game. But I'm going to give you one that to me is – you know, maybe he's probably going to go third, fourth, maybe, you know, and in, in with the running back position, usually you're better off guessing the later round than the earlier round. But I'm going to say he sneaks in to uh, the third round, and I'm actually going to go to Auburn's Tank Bigsby. Um, he just got the profile that works for me. He's 5'1", 210. He's got good size. He ran 4'5", 6". He can catch the ball at 30 grabs. 
He's got burst and bounce. Um, he explodes through contact. He can stop and start. Um, he's excellent after the catch. And and sometimes in your notes, like you have all the football stuff. And the last line I had in my notes is like, this is a fun player. Like you just kind of, there's some guys you watch and like, okay, that was fun, man. Like watching that dude, that's a dude. Like he's a good football player. I haven't heard a word about him. I haven't heard, I haven't been talking to teams. His name never comes up. And really? Just, it never it doesn't come up. And then for me, I'm almost like, Maybe there's a reason why that never everybody's comes. everybody's playing possum. Yeah, but I'm like his tape's too good. Like he's too good. But every year we see we see backs go in that third, fourth round range, end up being good football players. He's kind of the guy I would target there. You know, maybe let that first wave go by, and then I I I'd take my shot on him. You know, the thing the thing about it, DJ, and we talk about it, and you know, we talk about as more teams move to the back by committee thing. I think this year we only had what five running backs that had over a thousand rushing yards. It's five or six. It was a smaller number, one of the smallest yeah. numbers we've seen in a long time more teams are going to the by committee situation and you're looking for guys that fill specific roles. And if you're going to get a role player, I don't want to play top of the market prices when it comes to expending draft capital. I'm mm -hmm. trying to find those guys in the mid rounds for what they are, not only in terms of what their base contract is going to be, but Hey, if we're saying it's a like disposable position where we're going to continue to cycle that through every three or four years, well, I don't want to commit that kind of capital. And so there is, we talk about supply and demand. The supply at running back is so plentiful. And yeah. the demand is so, yeah, it's low. That you're seeing it impact the veteran market. Austin Eckler, Ezekiel Elliott, Kareem Hunt, all these guys that are looking, for, you're not going to find any money, dude. Like, no. there's no money out there. Jarek McKinnon, who had like 10 touchdowns last year for the Kansas City Chiefs, all of them expressing frustration at not being able to get like big money deals. Well, it's not going to happen because when you look ahead to this draft class, there are so many younger, Fresh fresher legs. bodies that are coming. I mean, it, 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 I mean it's, that's what it is. It's the mm -hmm. nature of the business right now. You can find these running backs that can come in, give you value for two or three years, and then you find the next one. And so hate it for running backs, man. Hate it. Yeah, it is. It Mom, is, it is Mama, don't let, you, don't let your kids play running backs. Have them go somewhere it, else. Like it's, it's, it's a short <laughs> shelf life. Yeah, it's a hey, corner. We've been trying to tell him for <laughs> you got an athlete, play corner. A little maybe maybe back off the squat rack a little bit and uh go out there and run a little bit more and play some hoop. Um all right, let's uh let's do uh let's do this one quick here. Let's go tackles and interior linemen. We'll sandwich them together. So if I'm gonna give you uh a tackle in the second round. Um, I'm actually going to go Bergeron. I'll go Matthew right. Bergeron from Syracuse. Yeah, so we, okay. Syracuse. So we're this, we can, we can share that one. And then, uh, you know, a good player. Some people think he'll play guard. I think he could hold up, um, did lose to miles Murphy a little bit against some power, but, um, overall I thought he does a good job staying attached. Good player, uh, interior offensive line wise. Um, we kind of agreed on that on the tackle there, Buck, who do you have as your interior offensive lineman on day two that you like, you know, it's, uh, it's so funny, man. Like, we we talk like I don't necessarily have the tackle. I like the the, the centers. I mean, I guess they can play tackle. Like I like Whipler from from Ohio State as one that kind of stands out to me. I mean, all these guys kind of rate the same. Michael Smiths, Whipler. Um, I like the kid. I mean, boy, he's didn't he pop his ACL in the workout? Yeah, uh, he got hurt. Yeah, I believe it was. Yeah, so he did the bench. He did the bench yeah, the next day. Yeah, so he he was one of my guys. I mean. You know, it, it's funny because I, I think it's a little lighter on the interior position. Good at tackle. I feel like it was a little lighter on the interior block. What do you think? Yeah, I, it's not a super, super deep group there. Um, so uh, I'm looking at it right now. I would probably go. I mean, we'll see who goes in the into one. But like day two lineman that I really like, I think Tipman ends up going in one. Um, I think Avila is a maybe. Osiris Torrance is a maybe. Cody Cody Malk, who we both really like, is going to go in two. Mm -hmm. uh, Smiths Smiths is a player we both like is going to go on. You know, probably mid second round. Uh, maybe he goes. Maybe you get him in the third round. But uh, that's kind of where he's in the mix. I, I two guys I would mention. Um, I just did this dude the other day. Everybody's been telling me about him forever. He was you know one of the best players who did not get a combine invite was Chandler Zavala from NC State. He's probably third round, fourth round range, but a really good player. He's nasty. Um, he's a finisher. Um, the guy for me who, again, probably goes early day three, but I would – my grade, I would take him on the third round is Braden Daniels from Utah, who's a left tackle for them. I think he's going to kick inside. Mm -hmm. He can really move, really athletic. This thing's get a little stronger. But 
Um, you know, so there's there's a list. There's a laundry list there. Good players. Um, Avila would be my favorite if he got to the second round, but I don't think. Yeah, so that's what I had. Yeah, because I, I mean, no I have one. A, did I have a borderline first round grade on Avila? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like just his ability. I, like I wrote down, he's a quick set specialist. Howard Mudd would love him <laughs> as quick as he sets yeah. and yeah. throws. I mean, he gets into him early. He jumps. He jumps guys at the line of scrimmage. He just understands how to do that. His quickness with his hands and his feet, it all works well. Uh, really good position blocker, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those are some of the interior guys that we like there on day number two. All right, let's take a quick break. We'll come back, and uh, we'll zip through the defense here. Favorite day two players at every position. We'll get back to it right after this. All right, Buck, let's start here. Edge rushers. So if we're looking at edge rushers, we assume are going to go second, third round. Guys that you'd be fired up to turn in the card for. Uh, why don't you fire off a name here? Who you got? Okay, this is funny because this is coming full circle. One of our guys who loves to kind of poke the bear at us was Brian Burns. Well, this player mm -hmm. reminds me of Brian Burns. That's BJ Ojolari from yeah. LSU. Uh, speed rusher coming off the edge. You see this quickness. You see the burst. Plays hard, high motor. Uh, is always very, very relentless in his pursuit of the quarterback. Um, upright rusher, 2.7 is like, I think he has the same move that Brian Burns used. That little dip and rip where he turns the corner <laughs> and does it. And so I just wrote down like, man, this dude is like Brian Burns. Uh, had five sacks. Um, I gave him a, a middle of the second round grade because I think he kind of comes off that. Might be more of a pass rush specialist. Don't know where we line him up each and every down in our base defense. But he certainly has value because he can get to the quarterback, and he's he's super athletic. Yeah, I like that one. Um, I'm going to go to the deeper cut because there is a lot of guys that are mm -hmm. um, borderline. You know, like to me, uh, FAU, right? Felix yeah. and Ike Uzama, I, I'd take him in the first round, but he might be there in the second. If he's there in the second, I think it's a home run pick. Keon White's my 28th player. I, he's yeah. probably been my one take back, right? If, if every year you have a player, you, you, grade, you grade him early, and you're like, oh, man. As I the more know, you DJ. watch, the more you do. I, I think I might have been too high, so I pulled him back, and then I got to the point what we were talking about uh, in the he's other. Been punished him like, up. He's been punished enough, man. Like that's enough. See, I don't. He's a see, little I older. He's a little tight, but dude, this guy bit. is explosive and twitchy, and he's got production. He can play inside. He can play outside. I think for me, Buck, it was as much as the Senior Bowl can help guys. Mm -hmm. I had a high expectation of him going down there. And when I left there, I was like, God, man, I just didn't think he dominated like I thought he would dominate down there. So I pulled back a little bit on him. So I had a borderline first round grade on him. Mm -hmm. And he's from, like, he's from my hometown. He played at one of the rival schools. He played at Garner High School. Um, and so, man, I felt like this dude played like a bull in a china shop. He does. Inside, outside player. Hard. Good athleticism, movement skills. Versatile. I looked down, look, he lines up at three, five, seven technique. Power rusher, relentless, active hands, counter, stout versus the run. But like you see him chasing it, backs, he's covering backs I mean, forty yards down the field. So, so, so to me, you talk about guys that I think are, are flying under the radar because I'm like, man, you're so high. And I was like, man, like I'm looking at the yeah. tape. I like good players. He's yeah. a really good player. He's active. Now he tore up my Tar Heels. Man. He absolutely no, obliterated no, them. Team. I mean, he, he tore them up, and so. I don't know, DJ. Like uh, he's six five, two eighty six. That yeah, versatility. No, run. I mean, just there's just a lot. And there's a much. I mean, I have. Yeah, I mean, that's what he's yeah. he's a hard one for me. You know who he reminds me of? Not as a player, but in the scenario. Do you remember how high I was on uh, the Miami dude who went to Buffalo? Why am I drawing a blank? Oh, uh, Greg Rousseau. Greg Rousseau, right? And then. The workout, remember, it was him and Jalen Phillips, his teammate at Miami. And Jalen Phillips looks so smooth and fluid and change of direction. And Rousseau was like, oh, crap, he looks tight, man. I didn't realize he was that tight. So I pulled back on him, and I ended up settling him in in, like, the 20s. He ended up going 20s. He's a good player, man. Like, he's, I think he got eight, eight sacks or something like that yeah, last been, year. He's going to yeah, get some double-digit sacks here. Been, good he's player. Been, he's been a good player. And, you know, and here's the thing, and everyone can learn this. And, and, and the hard thing is, like, the think tank or the mob mentality – you hear the same names and not only our colleagues in the league, but our colleagues in this business, right? You hear people talk about people. So then you start wondering like, man, no one's talking about the guy that I really like. Like, so then you start having like a little insecurity, like, man, am I, am I off? Did I have a bad day when I looked at the tape? Mm -hmm. But I mean, I'm convinced and who knows, man, but like the Keon whites of the world, the guys that you're really, really high on, like sometimes, man, when you see them that first time, DJ more times than not, your initial instinct, your initial reaction ends up being the right one. That's why for me, in my notes, that first go around, 
that's why I tend to write like, hey man, who's you remind me of those things. Yeah. So I can kind of, so I kind of stay true to like, no, no, I like this guy. And so I know we haven't talked about him, but I'm gonna stand out there and put myself out there and we'll see what it looks like in three years. Good mm-hmm. player. Yeah, no, I, I like him. So the, the deeper cut I was going to give you is one that could be probably third round guy. Um, I was going to go to Tennessee, uh, Byron Young. So uh, Byron Young is liked him. He's a good player. Like he him ran, too. Fuck, he ran four four three. He's got thirty two and a half arms. So okay, average arm length. But he had ten sacks. He's got big time get off. He can close at the top. Um, I thought you know there's times he can play a little bit small at times. He's not the bit not the biggest guy in the world. Uh, but I thought this guy had a really, really good feel as a rusher, and he had juice. Um, so to me, in the so, third round, I'd be fired up about him. So yesterday on Path, um, I did like five sleepers, guys to talk about. He was second on the list, you know, nice. when we talked to him. And it was the same thing. DJ, you can't take your eyes off of when you watch Tennessee. Like, yeah. and, I, and I know this, and some of this is like the high school coach of me, like, man, you just have an appreciation for guys that play hard. You know, guys that run to the ball, guys that finish at the ball, guys that, you know, you know, you just see them scratching and clawing to make everything. And he is one of those that when you look at the tape, he is all over the place doing it. We can talk about the size stuff and what is his like base position. I don't know, but I just know, man, he he plays the game like the right way. There's just so much to kind of like about him that, look, man, I'll, I'll kind of raise that flag on him. I, I just like him a lot as a player. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a fan as well. Um, how about a defensive tackle, Buck? Day two, you know, like it's it's not a great group of D tackles, man. Nah, it, it it's not. And then so I'll go there. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a solid uh, for my son. My son's at San Jose State. So I'll talk okay. about uh, Fioco, uh, mm-hmm. Vialami Fioco from San Jose State, like interior player, like six four, um, two seventy six. Like he's fine. He's a left end, but you know, it's kind of like I think he's gonna have to kick his ass. He's nothing as a pass rusher in terms of elite, but he plays hard. He flashes a little bit. Uh, maybe he has a chance. But you know, we talk about like this class and and what people have. Mm-hmm. Depth rotation player, but DJ, the only thing that 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 leads me to kind of hang on to these guys, we've seen so many guys come out the crypt that have ended up being decent contributors on teams. Mm-hmm. Right player, right system, right environment. So he's the one that I throw out there. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, I think he's, you know, I would say he's probably more likely day three than day two. Um, yeah. But he's kind of, you you hit it. He's a left end. He's going to be a left end. Um, I'll give you two guys. Um, to me, a second and a third. So I, I think Zach Pickens, I think, could find his way into the second round at some point in time from South Carolina. Um, yeah. He's got, he is long. He's, he's twitchy. Gosh, you, you know, I had a chance to talk to his head coach down there. He absolutely loves him. So uh, Shane Beamer is a big fan of uh, of Zach Pickens. But uh, uh, when you talk to Beamer, did, did be, when you, he when went you talk to in. Beamer, did Beamer have his shades on? Did he take his shades off to talk to you? Yeah, he golly, I'll tell you what, the man's got calves too. We can talk about the shades. We can talk about the dancing. But he was at the Masters wearing shorts. I was like, how much, dude? How many calf raises has this guy been doing? He's got, I mean, he's got like Phil Mickelson esque calves good <laughs> lord uh but yeah he's yeah beamer is a he's a big fan though of uh, okay so I like that, him so big and, yeah, no, yeah let me give you a sleeper uh one that was a non-combine guy and i've been going through doing all these non-combine Ooh. guys for the last week so uh one that i like and probably i think this guy will probably end up being a fourth round pick but i'm gonna fudge and say i could get him into the third and that's gonna be scott matlock from boise state um he was six, six four buck he's almost 300 pounds he ran under five kind of use him as a four eye there inside the tackle um he's just really really good on games he's got some twitch he's got some power um he was in the pa game he had a sack in the pa game so uh interesting interesting player yeah, you know maybe maybe he's a four five i don't know i sometimes with a defensive tackle in this class where it's not great i can mm. see him maybe going a little bit higher than than people think Okay, let me let me just pick your brain on two guys. So two guys that people have talked about like randomly but not consistently. So let's go USC, Thule, yeah, Tui Tui Pelotu. Pelotu. Yeah. What do you think about him initially? I I like him a lot. I think he's a I think he's a really good player. He was in my top fifty at one point in time. Um he's one of those guys where I appreciate the production, I appreciate the the uh, skill set. 
He's a, mm-hmm. you know, and you've said this before uh, over the years, like, hey, that's a pass rushes. There's a craftsmanship to that, like a route runner. But I, he just doesn't have a lot of juice. So I don't think he ever ran a 40. He's not real long, so he's got 32 and a quarter arms. He's kind of a tweener. He's 266 pounds. But this dude has a lot of tricks in his bag. Stutter bowl. Um, he can play with his hand up and down, slip, uh, rip. He can he can pop and separate, push, pull stuff. I mean, he's a great finisher. You give him a little bit of a runway, he's got power. He's just, um, you know, he's kind of a tweener and doesn't really have that elite juice and get off. And when we did those, uh, remember when we did that scouting series, the prototype series? I remember when we were doing D linemen and we talked to these coaches and we talked to players like, where does it start? And they're like, it all starts with get off. Like that's that's it. That's where it starts. Can you get off the rock? And I just didn't think he had an elite get off. Yeah. Um, and and look, DJ, just one of the things that um I've always been a stickler for. When you look at the great ones, and look, you were around, like, think about Sizzle, right? Yeah. T Sizzle didn't run a fast 40 time, but when you watched him play, his 10 was excellent. Yeah. Man, the get off, man, just they jump, they just jump off the, the ball. Like they're they're your thing going all the way back to like looking at Von Miller playing with Derek Thomas, watching Bruce Smith, the the elite guys have that part of it. And man, that get off puts so much pressure on the blocker right away. And so I think I think it's the number one thing that enhanced. You have those two mm-hmm. things, uh, you're gonna you're gonna be a problem. Uh the other person I was gonna ask you about is Yaya Diaby. Yeah, he's got you. Yeah. Um, like thoughts, just just initial thoughts or whatever. Because some yeah, of these guys he's, he's come long. up, we never really talk about him. Yeah, he's got gosh, he's got thirty four inch arms. Um, he's long. They kind of play that three man front, so you'll see him get washed and collapsed a little bit just because he's you know he's two hundred sixty three pounds. But push pull, he can change directions. He's he flashes some power. Um, again, kind of a little bit of a tweener, but he's got real juice. I mean, he ran four five one at two hundred sixty three pounds. So there's a lot to work with. I think he's. I think he's got a real chance of going on day two. Uh, I wouldn't. When I watched him on tape, I would have thought, okay, this is like a. This is like a good fifth round pick, like a little bit of a project. You know, mm-hmm. there's some stuff there. Now I'm like, ah, he's probably got a chance to go on day two. Yeah, no, it, it's funny. I will say this: there's not a tape that I like watching more than watching Louisville play defense. <laughs> like you, you, you talk about a guy, <laughs> like after my own heart. Yeah. If we're gonna play defense. We're not trying to be on the field long. No, we're gonna get you or you're gonna get us. But we're not gonna be out here watching hey, you dribble the hey. ball down the field. <laughs> the, the, the slogan, the, the unofficial slogan should be we're here for a good time. We're not here for a long time. <laughs> I mean, they come after you, and you think about the speed and the athleticism. And man, I forget the little corner that was at the shrine Kendrell game. Clark. Kendrell Clark, man. Squatting yeah. on balls, picking balls yeah, quick, off, like quick. just he was unbelievable he's, at the Shrine game. He's another he does, one that he does a good job of running up both sides of the scoreboard. <laughs> he does, <laughs> but he goes after it. Yeah, man. Like, so you think about an athlete like Yaya Diaby being able to play in a defense that just lets, hey, man, go hunt. We're going to yeah. hunt the quarterback. Like, uh, I like you play with your hair on fire. Yeah, interesting player. Uh, linebacker wise, let me give you a day two linebacker here. Um, I'm, I'm going to go with my guy who I've, I've been riding this one the whole time. I think I'm higher on him. I know teams in the league like him, I don't think they like him. Uh, as much as I do, uh, Marte Mapu from Sac State. I'm a, I know he's got coming off a of pec uh, injury, so he didn't get a chance to run. He's 6025. He's around 220 20 pounds, so he's a little bit undersized, but long, a lean, ultra smooth and athletic. He was awesome at the Senior Bowl, man. As a, uh, as somebody who sees things, he doesn't have like I, I wrote in my notes, Buck. His controller doesn't have a pause button. Like he sees <laughs> it and goes. Like there is no hesitation. He's got great instincts. He can cover. Um, I just think that's what linebackers are supposed to do right now. He's got that type of a skill set. To me, I take him, and I would, I personally, um, I would take him in the bottom of the second round, top of the third round, and and maybe some people in the league think I'm nuts on that one. He's one of those ones where I'm like, I'm willing to say, I'm gonna keep him yeah, right where so I have him. Here. Let let's wait, let's wait two three years, and we'll circle back and all these big school linebackers and you know, all the, you know all these fancy helmets and fancy uniforms. That little dude from Sac State. Is going to end up being better than almost all these guys. You know, it's really hard because, man, this 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 linebacker class is kind of ho hum. Yeah. But I do remember hearing in the fall about the kid from Sac State. You know, you, you tied into the guys on the West Coast. People like, man, you got to make your way up to Sacramento. They got a little guy that can make mm-hmm. plays, and so you see him. 
making plays. And we've seen the position is changing, man. We went from being uh, uh, guys who wanted these big uh, thumpers in the middle to, hey, no, we want speed and athleticism. We want guys that can match up. We want to be able to play a little positionless football. And so you got to have some guys that can run around and make plays. And so he's one of those guys that can run around and make plays all over the field. You remember, um, you know, he kind of plays as they play that little four two five, and and he's kind of the nickel hole player, and then he plays some robber. Do you remember? Mm-hmm. I think it was Cal Poly back in the day. Obviously, Erlacher was kind of the famous oh one. yeah, talking about Jordan played. Beck and those guys. Yeah, you remember how they would always play it like eight yards, like yeah, you know, yes. eight, eight to ten yards, and just put their athlete there and just let him just run, fill the alley, and make every play. Like he does that. Yeah. Kind of stuff. Yeah, like super safety stuff. Yeah, like yeah. Man, I remember. I remember that. I remember going there. I remember, I remember, that. I remember oh thinking like, I remember uh, thinking like, this is a great high school defense. Like this is this is what oh, you. Man. Yeah, it just yeah. Does, and you just take your you take your athlete. He might be big. He might be small. Whoever he is, we're gonna put you. We're gonna cover you up a little bit. We're gonna back you up a little bit and let and you just let just you see run. everything man, and go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just you don't have any responsibilities. Just see the pullers and just go screaming with your hair on fire. That is so funny, man. Take yeah. me back to Cal Poly. Oh, slow. That is oh. that is that is got um I have so you talk about big school guys. I'm going to go man, we I had to get you guys. What is it? 202? 202. 202. Oh, 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 just double up. Just toe oh, oh, give oh, it another go. They need to split this up, like his name. It just looks because all all the the double apostrophes are getting me. Toe toe from from Alabama. I tried to give you a way to remember it. Just think of it takes to o to o to make a thing. Go <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I am probably higher on this guy than a lot of man. The instinct. He's instinctive. He's instinctive. Man, just he can't the go wrong instincts, with man. Linebacker. The instincts. He just sees it. He goes. He plays fast. Um, you can tell he sorts it out. The difference, like, so like a guy like Trent Simpson, who is more athletic or whatever, but it takes him a step before yeah. he can see what's going his on before he goes. Yeah. yeah, like this guy, man, he goes. He sees it. He goes. He makes plays. He's smooth and fluid. Uh, I just wrote down in my, my notes, quick trigger, key mm-hmm. and go. He doesn't mess around. Um, I don't know, man. Good tackler, square hitter. So I, I got a nice little. Got a good mid second round I like grade it. on him. I got a nice grade. I got a six five on him. I got a mid. I got a mid second round grade on him. Like I kind of like the dude. I like it. Um, all right, I'm gonna give you. Uh, let's go to corners and safeties. We'll bunch them together. Just give you two names mm-hmm. here. Uh, for the corners, I'm actually gonna go Riley Moss from Iowa. Hey, uh, I like him. I'm a I Riley like, Moss guy. Like the white corner, Buck. Who knew the I white look. corner? So I brought this up because I I told. Um, I was telling Rhett, um, when I was in college, we North Carolina, we played USC in the Pigskin Classic in 93. Seahorn. Jason Seahorn. Mm-hmm. Um, Jason Seahorn was on that team. And I just remember, DJ, you never see that. You, hey. No. Okay. <laughs> usually, usually that's where the ball's going. Usually that's where the ball's going right away. Okay, so. Just come out a little bit. DJ, the ball, the ball. So, look, we run a post. And look, man, I run past him. And it's one of those things we like, oh, man, I can't wait. I'm going to catch this. I'm going to walk in. And DJ, I catch it. But, like, he comes out of nowhere. Because I'm like, I know I'm by him. And he just flies and makes a play on the ball. Now I catch it. But I'm like, holy smokes. And so then yeah. you go and you watch him continue to get better that year. But then you watch him play 10-plus seasons in the National Football League at corner. And we haven't really seen another one like that. Like, we haven't seen a guy who, look, you don't put him at safety just because the paint job. You see a guy who can legitimately paint play. Job. I love that. <laughs> so with Riley Moss, and look, and, I, and the reason I say that is because when I used to coach, um, before I coached where I coach now, Granada Hill, they used to coach at Notre Dame. And so we would have little guys like that we put at corner. And I would tell, like I had a guy, Cade, Cade's a little five eight white kid i said kate you can get all the smoke now i'm just telling you when, <laughs> when they see way, you bro. they see you they're coming your way so we got to be on it and so when I, I went and saw riley moss um two seasons ago he was in the big 10 championship game and i'm watching him and i'm watching him in warm-ups and i'm looking at the footwork and the transitions and the break and i'm like man this this guy is nice and he had the reputation coming in because he had a bunch of turnovers and interceptions oh, yeah. and those things and so dj i think it's invaluable to have a guy like that that can move around. I would be intrigued to leave him at corner for a little bit. Yeah, I, I certainly would, know he can play. Like I leave him at corner. He makes so many plays that 
it stands out. And I'll never forget going to Utah and watching Eric Weddle and watching mm-hmm. Eric Weddle take on Calvin Johnson. I think they played him in the bowl game. I remember that, man. Yeah. And Eric Weddle was up to the challenge. I'm not saying that Riley Moss is Eric Weddle, but I certainly see a lot of value in what he brings to the table as an athlete playing on the perimeter. Yeah, Riley Moss, 11 career picks, Buck. Um, so, And he's got three pick sixes. Guys, he makes a ton of plays, man. And he can run. He can jump. He had a good senior bowl. So, to me, I think he's got a chance to go in the second round. Uh, I think he's got mm-hmm. a good chance to go in the second round. There's no chance he gets out of the third. So, that would be a corner for me. And then the safety real quick. Then I'll get your names. Um, again, neither one of us, I don't think, are in love with the safety class. And so, I'll just – I'll I'm going to cheat and just give you the guy who's my top safety, and that's Sidney Brown from Illinois. Again, tons of production, six picks. Really mm-hmm. good special teams player. He's physical. He's tough. I think you're going to have to play him down as opposed to playing him high. Um, mm-hmm. but I know he's got a role. He's a good football player. He is a good football player. Sidney Brown, I'm all over. Uh, DJ, just the athleticism that he brings to the table, the instincts and awareness. You know, it's funny because I didn't expect him to be what he was when I popped in the tape. I knew the athleticism and stuff, but, man, you talk about six interceptions, just all over the place, tackling, awareness, down all in the box, him. physical. Um I mean, just a good player. And then you see the combine stuff. That's when you're like, oh, 447, 4 and a half inch vertical, 10 10 broad jump, 225, 23 times. So you're getting a super athlete who's also a pretty instinctive and productive player. So I'm good with him. Uh, I'll stay at the safety position in terms of uh, I got to like, how about Jordan Battle from Alabama? Um, he's kind of a, what I call like an old school thumper in the middle. I like mm-hmm. his eyes, the way that he lurks. And the thing, the funny thing about like the Alabama guys, he struck me when I used to look at TV copy as a big safety, right? Yeah, I, mean, I know. I mean, same thing. He's right. Not- but 6'1", 209. I was like, man, I thought he was so much bigger on TV before I started looking at the tape. I thought he was a really, really good player. So he's my guy. And I'm going to stay right there, Alabama. And this is a bit of a, I would call like a reputation pick and player in terms mm-hmm. of maybe in the third round. But Eli Ricks, from Alabama. The only reason I'm going to bring him up, DJ, as a potential day two guy, just because he's so long. He has yeah. all this stuff. Now, I would say you have to check scheme fit and I'll say culture fit um, mm-hmm. in terms of his personality. But in terms of his length, he was a five star re- recruit who went to L- LSU, goes to Alabama, super long, um, does a really good job as a bump and run specialist, played as a role player in Alabama. Uh, I just think when you're looking for guys that are long, 6'2", 190, maybe he goes day two, but probably more day three. Just keep an eye on Eli Ricks. He is one that I could see him going to Seattle somehow yeah. and finding his way to end up being a really good player. You know? Interesting. Moder- was he a modern-day guy? Yes. He's yeah, a modern-day yeah. guy. Modern-day yeah, guy. He was all world. He was all everything coming out of high school. Kind of bounced around and left. I think he might have ended up at IMG, but mm-hmm. he's local, so you always heard about him and you've seen him. And so he's just one. I just wanted to get the name out there because sometimes those guys kind of tend to go to the pros and they become, uh, they remember that they're five star recruits. So yeah, no kidding. The ability's in there. Um, all right, this has been a fun episode. I hope you guys have enjoyed it, knocking out some of these uh, day two players that we like and are looking forward. Uh, to seeing where they land here as the draft is right around the corner. Uh, Appreciate you guys hanging with us. We will catch you next time right here on Move the Sticks.